to look at the um, you know the issue surrounding um, the uh, possession of a weapon uh, mm -hmm. by the parliamentary candidate for right. Erutu Senya East. Um, and uh, issue went to court. Um, sorry, she was arrested right. and um, she was detained mm -hmm. uh, over a few days, right. a couple of days, uh, but she was released. Now, um, let me just read. I'll read different, you know, bits of different Can't things exactly. and then we'll, 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 get, we'll get into the story. So, Na Koyo um, released after hours in police detention and um, this story just says here, the National Democratic Congress um, parliamentary candidate for Ewutu Senya East, Phyllis Na Koyo uh, Okuno, has been released after hours of detention at the police CID headquarters. Now, she was detained originally um, at the Cantonments Police Station on Friday, June 7th, upon invitation, which angered the um, sympathizers of the NDC, who later besieged the premises to demand her release. Um, the story goes on there. Now, um, later, later that day, um, okay, so later on, on the, fol the following day, she was released about 11.30 a.m. on the following day. So on Friday evening, she was detained, and then on Saturday morning, just before midday, she was released. Um, we have uh, the, the prior to that, NDC supporters besieged Cantonment's police station, demanding the release um, of the um, said um, PC. We also have another headline. It says, uh, Mahama condemns the detention of Na Koyo, um, calls for her immediate release. All of this happened prior to her release. And uh, let me just hear your thoughts on where we find ourselves at the moment. Well, our term this um, perceived or, or, or a case of electoral violence mm. because um, the arrest of our uh, possession of gun mm. uh, raised eyebrows within that uh, parameters, I mean, or the grounds of where anything electing is going on. Mm. Why should somebody be possessing a gun? Okay. That, sh that should be the issue. Okay. But if she was just driving around town and she, po she was holding a gun, mm. that I wouldn't see her as a candidate of the NDC. I'm looking at it from the angle of any Ghanaian, and I condemn any person who illegally possesses a gun. Mm. On the other side, I would actually also see it's okay for those who have permits to carry the gun, mm. but how they handle it is also very important. Mm. You having the, the right to use a gun because you have a permit, mm. that doesn't automatically mean you should be wielding it around. Mm. You know? So mm. that's another thing. The issue is about whether the gun he had, uh, he, uh, she had a permit to actually hold the gun or mm. possess a mm. gun. Mm. That's one issue. Mm. For what you use, what, what is the person using it for? Mm. Protecting yourself, you know, you can be using it to protect yourself. Um, or are you are harassing people with it, mm. you know, or threatening people with it is another issue. Uh, have you actually renewed, you know, or reactivated the use of it? The periodic re renewal is very important. Okay. You know, somebody has a gun, maybe, maybe the license is expired. So that makes it at the point of hold, it becomes, you know, yeah. that means it's an illegal yeah. weapon you are holding right now. Yeah. So fair justice is also important in this case we are talking about. I mean, the persons who actually were, were, were holding the gun, if you picked one person holding a gun, mm. you fairly take the person through the processes. Mm. It's also very important. The, the, you see, there should also be the professionalism mm. of the EC and the police on the grounds. I mean, the EC, are they being fair? Have they allowed, if you say nobody should sit around this table mm. or everybody should go 10 steps away from this table, yeah. and I see another person nine steps I mean, away from the table. Yeah. That means a, a step ahead of me. A step closer. It could also, mm. you know, create some tension. So all these things would also hover on the professionalism of the EC and application of a rule. Okay. The, the police must also be there to also ensure that things go properly. Yeah. What's the way forward? I think, well, we should ensure, ensure fair application of the law. We should educate the owners of a gun mm. on how to actually hold the gun. I'm sure they do all this before they give them the gun. Mm. But periodically, be sending people text messages. Mm. You know, just like the way you send security tidbits. Mm. For them to be aware, look, that machine you are holding, it has A and B consequences when not well handled. Yeah. Yeah. So please, as you hold it, 
temperament. How do you control your temperament? Just maybe periodically, just so people know. You know, you heard the case of Zeman. Mm. You, I mean, all through to his own house. Yeah. And the provocation that stuff. But then, at the end of the day, if he had controlled himself a little bit, mm. you know. And so, possessing a gun is one. We, having the permit to hold the gun is another thing. And the use is also very important. We need to depoliticize this discussion. The politicization of all these discussions sometimes makes it very blare when it comes to the real, the main issues. So then we pick it from the political angle and then it becomes, uh, you know, a, a political banter and then we end it there. I think also we should also do some education of citizens mm. on elections. <laughs> a lot of people must understand this is only a process to select who should lead mm. either at the constituency level mm. or at the presidential level. Yeah. So let's be gentle uh, about it. Okay. Kabide, before you, you, you sum up your thoughts, mm -hmm. I want to ask that. So, if I juxtapose the situation, because in the same constituency, um, a few couple of years ago, there was a gun shooting um, surrounding the MP, right? Maybe uh, Tawa Kumsun. Now, the story here is written was written on the Ju on July 20th, 2020. And it says that, I'll just give you the headline. I fired gunshots at registration center to protect myself. Howard Kumson is quoted to have said. Now, in further stories, we have um, here police retrieve how a Kumsin's gun used at registration center. This is July 24th, 2020. Right. It appears to me, and based on the stories we look at here, so a parliamentary candidate is arrested for possession of a weapon, not the use of the weapon but possession of the weapon. And it is said that it was illegal. I have subsequently seen, you know, uh, records showing that it was licensed. Licensed and signed off by, um, you know, the requisite authorities, including the CID and so on. You know, documents to that effect. The question I have is, are we not... Um, in danger of appearing to, to be selective with justice or, you know, the way we, we, the way we treat cases in the sense that she admitted, and I read the headline, she admitted, she said, I fired the weapon. And I quote, she says, when I got the information that people were being bust from some places to my constituency, I could not sit down for some people to come there and register in my a constituency and elect an MP for the people of Kasua. I work with men because I can't work with women alone in this political enterprise. None of my men had guns on them when we got to the center. I fired the shots myself. Yes, I gave those warning shots to protect myself. And yet, there's no record where she was arrested. She was invited, right. right? And her weapon was retrieved by the police. But there was no place that she was arrested or detained for hours. This, for me, raises a lot of questions. Yeah, I, I, I rightly told you we need to depoliticize these matters and also ensure fair justice. You know, so I mean, like you, you rightly read, I mean, we're the record service. Yeah. So we need to, you know, by and by I tell people it's another thing understanding and it's another thing supporting something. I do not support the approach, but I understand the approach because we've been in Ghana. Mm. It's not the first time the, the, the swings happen this way. I mean, if, if, if you thought fairness could come any day, then you thought maybe this matter could have reflected some level of fairness. But yeah. unfortunately, I mean, this is what you have seen. But I am happy that um, she was invited. She went. 
Um, but the aspect of maybe detaining her when indeed she had documents to prove mm. that this permit <coughs> came from the police service themselves mm. also shows you that maybe she would still have some some bitterness. Yeah. Of course, if you went through all the processes of, of doing the right thing mm. and then possessing it, like you said, not wielding it against anybody mm -hmm. or threatening anybody with it, then you you, you, you you would know that maybe it is unfortunate mm. that somebody would say wielding, sorry, holding the, uh, or possessing a gun became a crime. You know, so I, I think she's gone through the processes. All I would be calling for is that, look, let's, let, let's have the police to be proactive on these things. I mean, maybe sometimes you pick this thing, you know she has a license, she has a permit to carry it, so you can just squeeze her about it and mm. then maybe ensure that, that's why you are there present as mm. well, mm. so that you can be, be sure that she will not use it for the reasons for which uh, it was given to her yeah. against anybody, right? Yeah. It was yeah. given to you to protect yourself, but it was not for you to hold it and use it against people who are innocent or threatening them. But if she didn't do any of this, I'm sure the, 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 the police will clear her. But seriously, to speak to it about the angle of politicizing these mm. issues, mm. it becomes very, very dangerous. And I think the police should be proactive and ensure that, look, any group of persons who misbehave around the, uh, the, the circumference where there is this political activity, yeah. they should take them on. But look, let's hold meetings with our political parties. There needs to be some watering down of tensions. Yeah. I think it's important. Yeah. For me, that's what I think we should, we should just make sure, look, I'm, have the right to I'm looking at the receipt here, and honestly, there's something, I'll, but I'll mention it later. Well, right. Let me just introduce right. our other guest to you. Um, Mr. Thompson has joined us on the show. He is the executive director for ASEPA. Mr. Morning. Good, good, good How morning. are you? I'm good. Thank super, you. super. Yes. Yeah. The, the range wanted to, to slow you down small. I'll tell yeah. you. But you are here. Yeah. It's good. Only God knows how. <laughs> <laughs> um, your thoughts on this situation in the Ewutu Senya East? Uh, very good morning to our cherished viewers mm. once again. And I think these issues, uh, I was listening to uh, Jeffrey right now, and I mean, and also the issues that you yourself have raised. And, you know, they bring to question the, the position of the police, who are the key law enforcement agencies, as far as issues involving political parties mm. and political actors are, are, are concerned. And all the time, it looks like the police always fail to engender trust and confidence that are very instrumental in the work that they do. And you can engender this trust and confidence only when you apply the laws of the country fairly and equitably. Mm. Without fairness and equity, there is no justice. And justice is a prerequisite for peace yeah. and order yeah. in every society. Yeah. Now, I'll mention a few things that have happened. The, the police arrested a parliamentary candidate of the NDC who is a lactating mother, mm. detained her on the grounds that she was in possession of a firearm, yeah. a weapon. Yeah. Okay. Upon preliminary investigations, mm. they themselves found out that the weapon was registered. The necessary documentations for the weapon was produced for them. Yes. They got to the headquarters. They called the officer who signed the documentation. Yes and said, is this documentation from you? The officer said, yes. Mm. I was the one who prepared these documentations. Mm. OK. Then they say, but when we look on the name, mm. one of your name, one letter is missing in the <laughs> name. And so it is not you. One letter is written in your name. And so, it is not you. This is the police who, a key law enforcement agency. Kweku, and the police have lawyers who, mm. 
there is a key principle of law called falsa demonstratio rule. And what is the falsa demonstratio rule? The falsa demonstratio rule says that a mistake in a document does not invalidate the document as far as the meaning of the document is clear. Wow. Please say that. What is that again? The falsa yeah. demonstratio rule. Okay. Falsa demonstratio rule. Where yeah. is this rule? It's a, legal, it's a legal principle. Okay. That says that a mistake in a document does not invalidate the document as far as the meaning or the intended meaning is clear. This is a basic principle of law. So, for example, I'm giving document to Jeffrey. Then, in writing the name Kabuti, I know that you live at Hacho number, plot number five. So I say, my house, it goes to Kabuti at plot number five. But in the first instance, I use K to start the Kabuti. In the second instance, I use C to start the Kabuti. Mm. But I said, of the same plot number five at Hacho. Mm. There's only one Kabuti who lives at plot number five Hacho. The fact that in the first instance I use K, in the second instance I made a mistake and use C, does not invalidate the intended meaning okay. as far as the intended principle is clear. Mm. Basic principle of law. Okay. Yet the police, with all the legal advice, all the lawyers, they themselves are lawyers who detain this lactating mother for left for on, the, on this frivolous basis. During that same time, a parliamentary candidate in the Western region, it was on TV, inciting people that when the police and the military come to the Agalamse site, they should beat them. That person is still sleeping in his, in his house um, now. That's the story. Is this, hold on, let me just confirm that. Is that the story we saw on the Daily Search Light? Uh, exactly. Um, it said, uh, it's official. Soldiers ordered not to arrest for Galamse. Beat them if they stop you. This is a parliamentary, another parliamentary candidate. Too. Yeah. Of this one, not from the NDC, mm. but from the NPP. Mm. Inciting physical violence, not against even civilians, against our officers, they themselves, their police members, and even the military. That guy is sleeping on his bed now. All of them, parliamentary candidates, different parties, you know, in principle, one of the offenses is much even graver. The one which even the much graver offense is sleeping in his home. Okay. Then we have a certain person called Mr. Victor Ousu, who bears another name called Kwabina Edu Jemfi. With different date of birth, different passports, <laughs> acquired <laughs> diplomatic passports on the same names, use the same names publicly. The police are aware. Does there, there's a but, law. Koku, let me make this point. It's very okay. important. There's a law on deception of public officers when you are filling forms. Especially on statutory forms like acquisition of passport, like driver's license, you know, all those things. You, if you lie on those documents, it is deemed that you have deceived a public officer. But he could have all those four names. Koku, I'm coming, I'm coming, I'm coming. This is a person who bears two identities, the only person in Ghana who bears two separate identities that has been issued two separate passports with the two identities. We, as an organization, filed a complaint with the CID. I wrote and signed that petition. Up to date, not a single response from the police. The man has not been, you know, invited for any questioning. Absolutely nothing. No, but wasn't, wasn't he invited at the Nobody point? invited him. Nobody has well, invited him. Who, the police nobody invited him has invited that man. Really? 
he's still working about praying for Dr. Baumia and everybody. Mm. Nobody has arrested him. No, arrested, yes. Nobody has arrested him. But I think he was invited at the point. Invited where? Nobody has invited him. As far as I am concerned, I am the petitioner in that case. Mm. As far as I am concerned, yeah. he has not been invited for questioning for anything. I see. So you ask yourself, does the police have a different law for ordinary Ghanaians and another law for persons in government? Is that what the police is telling us? Are they saying that we citizens of this country are the least offense that we could be cautioned? The police are quick to detain us. Go to circle, go to the, uh, on the roads. Mm. Innocent drivers on minor road traffic offenses being swamped into jail and being prosecuted. But as far as you are associated with this government or persons in government, you can commit any offense that you want. As far as you can show your association with persons in this government, you can go scot-free. The police will not act. Is that... But is that not what we've done over the years, where the police seem or appear to be beholden Koku, to their, to be, to their um, paymasters? Koku, the, the point right. I am making, mm -hmm. I'm using the term police. Yeah. I am not restricting the definition of police mm. to just this administration. Okay. So... Okay. I'm using the term police. Mm. And Mr. Dampare, you know, we love you so much. Some of us have a lot of respect for you. Some of us have supported you a lot when it comes to your work. And we know, Kweku, that when the police want to work, they can work. Oh, yeah. If the police want very to good do their it. job. If the police wants to be very professional, yeah, they can be very, very, very good professional. Yeah. And so, Mr. Dampare, you have raised the bar of policing in this country. Definitely. At least, the first lift you've given the Ghana Police Service in this short period under your administration is something all of us recognize. And we are quick to see too. And that is why we are all, always not quick to criticize you. And so please do not soil mm. your reputation, your legacy at this last hour with some of this needless politicization, needless victimization, and some of this unjust application of our laws against persons associated with the opposition. If you saw what happened at the territory, the cantonment's police station where mm. the parliamentary candidate was held, from the previous night to the following morning, that sim simple, single incident almost raised the political tension. Uh, you mean by the crowd? Yes, the crowd. There they, were burning, they were burning tires. I okay. mean, there was a lot of commotion okay. over there. Okay, okay, yeah. All right, yeah. And it nearly raised the political mm. tension mm. in this country for nothing, for what? Mm. Just, just for a spelling mistake in somebody's name. Mm. I mean, I think sometimes... Is it even really a spelling mistake? I mean, that's the honest but question. But even if I mean, it was a mistake, ask, it should have one filled the form. Ask ourselves, is it really a spelling mistake? Because ha it happens, and it happens all too often. But I've seen national documents. Yesterday, I was reading the, 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 the health financing strategy of Ghana. Mm. And the, the, the word for which the document mm. was, was actually created for health was mistakenly it's spelled in the document about yeah. once or twice. Yeah. I guess I in studio, we've been having a conversation about what happened uh, in the last few days uh, with the arrest of the parliamentary candidate of Ewuchi Senior East. And um, I have with me Kabute Okansi and Mensa Thompson, and we're having this discussion. Now, gentlemen, yes. just real quick, real quick, before we make progress mm -hmm. to the next stories, this is the what we've been talking about, in case you missed it, this is the mistake that was made by the officer who was actually signing um, the receipt. So this is the official license from the Ghana police 
service. You can see the license on the screen there. And um, what I find fascinating is that beyond everything else, the mistake was that one O is missing from the coil. Yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah one O is missing mm. from there. And that's, you know, yeah. seems to be the issue mm. that we're talking about here. Uh, but even beyond that, what's fascinating for me is that it's 12 CDs. Is, is that a mistake or is it real? Mm -hmm. 12 Ghana CDs, two mm. nice is a record. Well, mm. <coughs> well, I think and we say we are, we are serious about taking small arms off the field. I think we are, we are missing an opportunity to raise revenue. Ah, mm. I don't understand it. Yeah. I mean, because we need mm. to be uh, uh, monitoring and, and regulating these small arms. Oh, this is the official uh, amount. There's a, the unofficial amount is there. Oh, okay. Well, no, me, I'm just wondering. Well, that could be, what well, that could be, I mean, but, yeah. for, but for me, <laughs> if you ask me, I'll just say that um, mm. it's a matter of, I mean, a, another opportunity of revenue for mm. me, you know, mm. for me to look at maybe, maybe even a thousand cities or two thousand. Absolutely. Mm. Yes. Seriously. So that you can no, wait, wait. First of all, first of all, why do you need to bear a weapon? Yeah. Do you understand? I remember, God bless his soul, um, you know, Major, he, he died as a major. Was it a kennel? Yeah. Uh, Mefo, right. uh, Major Mefo, Emmanuel Mefo, um, years ago, um, he was defending, he was defending the UN compound in Afghanistan. Right. And when the entire the entire team got out, he was the last man, and he took a bullet, you know, and um, a very unfortunate incident. But he said to me, you know, that even he as a soldier does not keep a weapon in his car. Because yeah. he will be tempted to use it. Yeah, in the case of a situation, he may yeah. be tempted yeah, to use it. He does not keep a weapon in his car. Yeah. As simple as that. But you know, it, it, so th those are regulatory issues that must be looked at. I mean, like uh, Jeffrey said, revenue aspect. But again, it makes for ridiculous argument and conduct when just an O, a letter, missing in the name could be the basis for all this brouhaha that we've, we've had. It's a very mm -hmm. bad precedent. I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, this flies in the face of the non demonstratio principle, the principle of non demonstratio, non set decum capore constat, hey. which is Kasa a ben basic Aoki. principle of law. <laughs> I, I think like Emesa said, let's be careful. Like I said earlier on, my own is fair justice. Mm. Because you see, you can, you can, you can, you see, the, you know this reggae song, we don't want no peace, we want equal rights and justice. You know, when, sometimes when you see peace, like, you, you may, may mistake silence and quietness as peace. Mm. You know, but you don't know. People are so angry. That's some, the few that were able to go to the police station to express their, 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 their upheaval, you don't necessarily have to tag them as NDC. You see, some people want to make sure that it doesn't trickle and become the norm so that tomorrow morning it will be used against you. Mm. You see, when it happened to the priest, you say, oh, you are not a priest. It will happen to the mechanic. Okay. You say, oh, you, you don't, you don't so, fit so, the vehicle. 